Yay Networks. Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I'm your host, Sybil Amuti, and I can't wait for you to hear all of the Great Girlfriend magic on today's show. So without further ado, grab something great to drink, grab your pen and your paper, and get ready for this week's episode. Enjoy! Happy Wednesday, great girlfriends. I am super excited to have you back for another episode of the show. By now, you have been listening and been up to speed on lots of really great topics uh, spanning from marriage and motherhood to moments that matter inside of those relationships to uh, finding your peace and joy with Dr. Angela, um, undoing perfectionism with Erica Cooper. And now I want to get into your business a little bit. I want to have a conversation about. Um, what it looks like to be a woman of enterprise and what it means to start a business that you can scale from zero to seven figures. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Um, I'm sitting with an expert today who I'm super incredibly excited to meet and converse with, Dr. Tracy Lynn. Hey, Dr. Tracy. Hello, hello. So good to be here with you. It's so great to have you. I was telling Dr. Tracy when she jumped on, we both chose curls today. She is just looking, I mean, absolutely stunning. So I'm so happy to bask in your light today, Dr. Tracy. Thank you. Glad (laughs) to be here to bask with you. I know. Let's do it. So I've read a little bit about you, but great girlfriends, I do want to just share some of Dr. Tracy's expertise. I think it's important that you hear about all of the powerful, powerful work that she's done and is doing and why we need our pen and paper for this episode. So Dr. Tracy Lynn, known as the $100 million woman. Let me make sure you heard that number properly. The $100 million dollar woman is a legendary entrepreneur who transformed um, a mere $200 into a 100 million direct sales dynasty with her brand, Tracy Lynn Fashion Jewelry. Renowned for empowering empowering thousands of women around the world, she's grown her company to be one of the largest in the direct sales industry with nearly 100,000 consultants. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Her achievements have earned her a spot among the top 50 direct sales companies in the U.S. and featured in Essence Black Enterprise and the Huffington Post. As a celebrated speaker and role model, Tracy inspires with her journey of resilience, excellence, and dedication to helping others achieve success. She is now on a mission to help female entrepreneurs take their life and business to the next level uh, so that they can live the life they've always known they were destined to live. Dr. Tracy, okay, how did the $200 woman become known as the $100 million woman? There have been so many iterations of me, and that is the thing that people fear the most. They fear failure and can't see it as a moment to learn. I never saw myself as a failure. I saw the business fail. This was not for me. That failed, but I didn't take it on personally. So Mm -hmm. there, I allowed myself to grow and to have many iterations. So that's how you get there. So even with the jewelry, I mean, that was like my, almost my third time of doing the jewelry business before I really, I was firing on all cylinders. And we don't always allow ourselves because we can talk ourselves out of it when something doesn't work. It's easy to say, well, that's not for me. God doesn't have that for me. When it is, you've got to grow into it. You've mm-hmm. got to have process. We we sometimes want to skip over process. And there is no way to skip over process unless you inherited something. Mm-hmm. The only way you can skip it. So mm-hmm. the $200 woman was process. So I took mm-hmm. the $200 in a Tupperware container. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we're not willing to start where we are. And I tell Mm -hmm. people all the time, start when it's easy, not when it's hard. I was working a job and selling jewelry out of the Tupperware container. Why was that easy? Because I had the guaranteed income of the job. Mm -hmm. And I still put in the work to sell and make money in the business. But what a lot of people like to do is quit the job, start the business, and then eat all the profit. And so you're eating it And it's not going well because you can't invest it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So I was okay with starting where I was at every level, no matter what people told me. Oh, you know, that's not professional. You got to be more. Prof I, I understood what professionalism was, but I was where I was and I was always okay with it. Mm -hmm. At every level, people always had something to say about how I was doing this, but I was always okay. I was always about excellence, but I was okay with starting where I was. So she reinvested the $200 woman, had been through some things, had been through a divorce, but I kept going, kept reinvesting, kept making it happen, got remarried to the same man I've been with now almost 30 years and about another month. So Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> process, iterations. It's iterations. <laughs> and we need to understand that word. There are iterations. I am not yeah. the same woman, the $200 woman, mm -hmm. as, as I am today. But mm -hmm. there is a process and there are iterations mm -hmm. that we have to move through that sometimes people don't want to move through that. Mm -hmm. And it was the same business that I shut down because people were talking about me and I heard them and I shut the business down. Now we're going to stop doing business over somebody talking about us. We're not even going to know in 10 more years. Right. This business could be 25, 35, 45, 50. It was a hundred million dollar business for me. And I almost gave it all up over some conversation over some people who I don't even know anymore. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Mm. I need to go back in time. I, I'm going to get to the double to the to the how you re-upped. You doubled down on this marriage for, <laughs> for now 30 years. But yeah. I want to go back to young Tracy. The young Tracy, what did young Tracy imagine for herself? You, Little you girl got, Tracy. So young Tracy, even at four, sold clothes and accessories. Wow. I mean, so all of this, this is not for you. This is yeah. for me. This is me. Yeah. You know? I got pearls all over my pants. You yeah. See yeah. Right. This, this is, this is the me that grew up with a grandmother who sold clothes, accessories out the trunk of her car. Mm -hmm. And instead of me going to Miss Queenie's daycare, I went with Janie May, my grandmother and sold clothes. And my job was to remember directions. I'm very good with directions and to remember how much they owed us. She would always make a bill. So I'm good at counting money. Been doing that since I was four. And, uh -huh. and, and I'm my mother's only child born on her birthday. Mm -hmm. She wanted me to be a physician, hence Dr. Tracy. Mm -hmm. So it's not I could, because I couldn't take it. I went to University of Michigan. I was going to medical school. Woo! I passed out every time I saw blood. I was like, mother, this is talk. Because I am not called to be a physician. Right. That's your dream. And it was only her dream. So young Tracy is taking it in. The only way you're going to make money, she told me, you got to be a doctor, a lawyer, or Indian chief. She didn't realize I was the chief, the CEO, mm. the chief executive officer. She was raising a chief, Come but on. didn't see it. She was just using the word chief and not yeah. realizing she was talking to the chief. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Yeah, that chief that retired her, that chief that bought her her car, her house that makes her, not makes her, ha invites her. That's what my mother would say. You ain't making me. Invites her to come in every state I am and make sure she's always set up. Mm. The chief. So mm -hmm. she was raising the chief. Grandmother was teaching entrepreneurship. And so young Tracy was a little confused because I was smart enough to be a doctor. And I was smart enough because that's what they told me. They told me I was smart. See, mm -hmm. I believe it. Mm -hmm. I believed that. And I, I was, but I, I, I believed it. But in my mother's mind, the only way you could really make a living is if I did that. That mm -hmm. is how I could really do something big and great with my life. So I had to break mold, do something different. So she was not always happy, but always supportive. Didn't always mm -hmm. understand it, but always yeah. support. So today she realizes that it was a chief. So when you don't always have, I couldn't do corporate America. I couldn't. I was sleeping at my desk. I was like, now nah, I'm only 23 years old and I'm sleeping at this desk every day. <laughs> what? You want me to go 30 years with this? <laughs> wow. You can't get rest. <laughs> exactly. It's not the move. It's not, not the move. move. Yeah. Not the move. And so I always tell people, get in the right environment 
where yeah. people can support the vision that you're going for because everybody is not going to see it. Mm-hmm. Even in your own household, even people who love you, they're not going to see it. Sometimes you're going to have to prove it. So you got to remember all the iterations of me and, and, and other businesses. But one thing I had in common, I had when I was a uh, 14, 15, I started an employment agency in my neighborhood, got all the kids jobs at Burger King and McDonald's and got a, a percentage of their first paycheck. So, wow. and, and then, you know, so I was always, I was a founder of, uh, I was the founding bassless president of my chapter at the University of Michigan Dearborn. There was no Greek life mm-hmm. on, on campus. I went to Spelman, loved it, came back because I got kicked out because the, the men were too fine at Morehouse. So my mother kicked me out of Spelman, <laughs> brought me back to Michigan. She did right. She did right. And, um, and I started that chapter. So I, so I need you to see this pattern. I, employment agency, other people. Then coming back and getting the sorority established, other people. Then I was doing another business, other people. It always had something to do with me and other people. Mm -hmm. Noted that that I had a way to pipe, pipe, lead women. and And I was just always just good with inspiring women. And that's when I decided I wanted to do jewelry. It was clothes first, then jewelry. And just partner with them. Didn't have to get all the money or percentage. I was doing that as a kid when mm-hmm. I had the employment agency. Mm-hmm. So I took the, the native gift. We got to look inside, not decide based on the money you see people making. Everybody wanted to sell jewelry when they saw the money I was making. And then they ain't make no money because what they didn't realize, you can't copy right. what somebody else is going to do and get those same results if it's not the gift in you. So you got to get with you and do some discovering. You don't decide on it. You discover it. Mm -hmm. And then you let that thing out. So I I discovered I could not be a physician looking at blood. I discovered that by passing out. I discovered it. But what Mm -hmm. I also discovered is that I had something for inspiring women and getting them to, to see bigger, to do bigger. And what I had to do is grow through the process of everybody ain't going to like me. Everybody's not really for me. There's going to be some backstabbers. So I had to, I had to, I I had to process. That's why it was so many iterations Mm -hmm. because I didn't, I I didn't want that. I, I, I came from some, some good folks. We said what we said, we met what we met and we loved hard. I wasn't used to that. Even though I grew up in Detroit and all that, I still in my circle, so I, I, I iterations mm-hmm. to get me to the bulletproof point. Oh, I love that. Okay, but so in those iterations, and I, and I just want to, and I hope you can take this in the right way. You, if the streets would have had you, would have made a marvelous maiden, a pimp. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you, you have the gift of persuasion, powerful persuasion. Mm-hmm. And you also have Yes. And so in those iterations mm-hmm. comes a lot. I hear you saying there's a lot of lot of naysayers. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of of uh you having to reaffirm the native gift, which is such powerful language. I love that. Um, through that discovery. But mm-hmm. most people, like you said, will quit in the process because that discovery is too painful. It's too expensive as an entrepreneur. Um, it's too burdensome to even try to learn on the job, right? Mm-hmm. To try to get get that education in place. Right. How were you able to empower people to be that for you, to be your advocates, to be your mentors, your sponsors, so that you could go through that discovery, you could use those native gifts, and you could operate through process? So one of the ways I did it, first of all, my family was always going to support me. They were just going, they were going to always ride with me. Mm -hmm. So I always had that. Then I got into other groups that were going in the direction I wanted to go when I understood my gift. So I started hanging out and speaking with Les Brown. I just realized I had a speaking gift to encourage and persuade. 
Yeah. So where do you go with that? You start looking up Les Brown. Somebody, my husband was the one that told me, you remind me of Les Brown. I listened to his stuff. I was like, this man installed all my material. And <laughs> that. So we were saying the same things, but yeah. I had to pay for some mentors. People don't want to pay. Everybody want to, can you mentor me? I know what that means. Can you give me free? I know yeah. what it means, but it, it costs. See, free is that, free thing but if you want to receive something you got to pay for it that's how you earn it and you can really wear it yeah the handout so i looked him up found out where he was and i went paid money to go to his speaking event Mm -hmm. and out of the whole group i didn't do well at the table i got nervous when he came over so i wasn't picked to to speak in front of him that day but he wrote in my book you have the gift and I went back because I knew everybody had that. He must have wrote that because I he didn't hear me say anything good. And I came back up to him. He said, I, I know the gift when I hear it. Mm. He said, you have the gift. But when I came, you played small. You just got scared. He said, but I know it's in you. And I'll be in touch because I'm going to have you travel with me. You're going to open for me in five cities. And that is the story. Wow. And traveling with Les and opening for him, you know, on these stages, he, I would, he, I would go out. He said 15 minutes. I was on and off, honey, in five minutes. Mm-hmm. I wasn't ready for 15, but by the time six, seven, eight times I was 15. Yeah. You know, I, I got there and yeah. he always knew it. He could see it. That's how I can also see. Mm-hmm. And he, he helped pull that out. So I surrounded myself, even if I had to pay to get in the room, Mm-hmm. If I had to pay to get in the room, I was willing to pay it. I know what it costs in time, effort, sweat, rejection, loss, and money. Yeah. Do it. Oh, that is so good. And I know great girlfriends listening are thinking about the times that they were too afraid to make the investment in themselves. Yeah. Right. But I hear what you're saying. If you don't invest in really, really blooming that native gift, then it will never fully f- come to fruition. You will never see the hundred million dollar in experience and value and quality of life. It's not always about just the numbers, but it's also the quality of life. The amount of fulfillment that I am experiencing in you is just beyond containment in one episode. It's just, it, the it, I'm serious. You, you're blowing me. You're like, you're so full and it's, it's just flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. So I know that it comes from a full place. I want to know about the scaling piece for you, because direct sales, um, that's not a traditional space where you see a woman of color uh, planting her feet and then growing to the scale at which you did so. Why direct sales for you? Well, uh, see, I didn't I didn't choose it. It chose me. Mm. I, I was always doing something that included other women. Yeah. So that was the obvious choice. And then you can think about it in terms of a black woman. There has been no other woman. Madam C.J. Walker. Mm-hmm. She was the first. A mm-hmm. hundred years later, Tracy Lynn. Mm-hmm. Nobody else in between. Mm-hmm. Nobody else that's documented in the direct selling space. Yeah. I ain't talking about so-and-so's uncle and so-and-so that's tried this and auntie. No, I'm talking about documented. I was on the board. Then I was on the executive committee. Then I was the vice chair of the direct selling association documented. Mm. Me and Madam Walker for a hundred years, I was called to do it. Mm. And so once I realized that that was my space, that was my lane, I jumped in. So the point of me telling you I was on the board means that I made friends with big connections. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm on the board with the chairman of Mary Kay. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm on the board, not just on the board, but the executive board. This is this big. So I'm an executive member. Here I am, me sitting up at these tables. And what it did was take the learning curve. That's why I coach now, because I wanted to help people with the learning curve. My job is to help collapse it. And that's what they did for me. Mm. Well, that's why also I was very successful and understood how to scale. I got with the people who were already there. Yeah. Collapsed mm-hmm. my time. My, I need to know how to do this. Call this person. Well, I, I'm, I'm coming up with that. Well, everybody goes through that. Just hurry up, go through it. Where everybody else would stop and be out of business. They were like, oh no, that comes with the territory. And you're going to find it again in year five. 
okay, so I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So just to, to know how to navigate. Well, you know, you're going to need five attorneys, right? And, and this, am I? Yes. So start looking now, start here, there, and I needed five attorneys. So I, I, I've been fortunate, blessed to know what it is, what I came here to do and know that it was a clock on it. So to all the procrastinators and all the other people to say, well, it's not that I'm procrastinating, but I got to get my credit right. I got to wait till Pookie graduate. We ain't got time for you to get your credit right. We ain't got time to be waiting for Pookie to graduate. Because if you wait 18 years for Pookie, things will change. There is a mm -hmm. right time in a business. Mm -hmm. It's called the life cycle. And this is real. This is, this is like document life cycle of a business. People don't understand that. I had to do the business in the cycle of my time. I'm like, no, but it's so true. It's so true. And with procrastination, you that have the paralysis. I, I let me let me see. I, I'm gonna guess that that's not an issue for you, but because no, I don't have the time. And, and it's not that it never was. Yeah. But analysis paralysis will stop you because we don't want to make a mistake. Listen, step out and find out. How else you gonna know? Right. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, let me get in your let me get in your house real quick. Let me let me dip into the uh, your love and your relationship because I know that if you are with a man for thirty years. And you have this level of energy and intensity and passion and zest and fulfillment. <laughs> he has a full understanding of the woman he's with. And he's also a respecter of your gifts. And he honors them. Tell me a little bit about how you have the love alongside having the success in your career. Well, first of all, let me say that you are extremely intuitive for <laughs> You know some things, you know what I mean? Yes. Sleep on you. You know some things. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. Um, so when we met, we didn't date for a year. We we got married within maybe 10 months of knowing each other. And so we've been together 31 years, and we'll be married in July for 30 years married. And he saw my potential from the door. He understood who I was. He understood what I was doing. He retired himself from his job to come and support me to, we raised the son. He was the, the dad that picked up the child early, every day from school, got the dinners ready um, so that I could run with the vision. Wow. And he was man enough never to feel small about it. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. Come and on. He cooked the meals and enjoyed, enjoyed being the priest of the home, be, enjoyed being my protection. He was the most safe arms that I could possibly run to after everything was over. And we made rules. We made ground rules. We don't talk business after eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. Ain't no jewelry emergencies after eight o'clock. <laughs> So what are we talking about? <laughs> oh, somebody gonna quit if you don't call them, then they gonna have to quit. Because yeah. I ain't calling them. We're gonna talk talk about that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we didn't let those things because it would never end. My household, I needed some peace. I needed to have a regular household. I needed to be with my son, my husband. We had dinner. I needed things to normalize at eight o'clock, and I didn't work on weekends. So we had family time. My son, I took him to the movies almost every Saturday or somewhere. I made the most of the moments. Mm -hmm. And my husband gave me freedom to be Tracy Lynn. And he gave me the comfort and the safety for him to take on all the things that I could not handle. He was, mm -hmm. he was strong enough to do it. Mm. Oh, we love him. Oh. <laughs> yes, and I still grin at him. We still yeah. finish with you. We got a date tonight. That's why I'm still all dressed up. Oh, you are so date ready. Yes, yes. you are. <laughs> yes, honey, face everything. So date ready, and so date uh, ready. just anything I want to do, he's with me. Mm. That's important. That's that's why he's a keeper. Yeah, yeah. So, so this legacy of yours mm -hmm. is 
it's whole. It's whole. It is, it's, yeah. it's a complete picture of all of your gifts coming to life, right? The gift to be able to love and have companionship is very rarely found. Mm. Um, I speak to I, I, 400 plus interviews. Okay. So I speak to all, I speak to all types of women who struggle with the idea that they can have that level of companionship alongside the success of a business. Um, and many times they find themselves uh, alone, feeling al- alone, even in companionship because they don't have the connection. The connection has been lost um, or they don't have the person that they can really lean into, the safe space. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I can see and feel it. I can feel it because it's showing in your vibrance. Yes. Yeah. It shows in your vibrance. And um, one of my guests earlier today just talked about what she loved about her husband is never having to shrink um, her identity in his presence. Her husband's a giant and she's a giant too. And, and, and her husband honors who she is. And, and that's such a key piece to you being confident and and as a parent. So that's really, really important to, to note. I think that's really beautiful. So now back to these numbers, because I know the great girlfriends want to get to the hundred million dollar. They want to know they, they do. And I want to know, we're all curious about your timeline and progression. Um, the scaling do's and the scaling don'ts. And I, you and, and let me just say, you know, I have to have you back. Okay, cool. Yes. As long as you yeah. agree. All right, okay. perfect. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> just trying to get all of this in. I, just, I, like, I can't. I'm like, I need more. So I'm just yeah. going to say up front, I need you back. And then you'll say yes. And that's perfect. Okay. Absolutely. And I already said yes. Okay, so perfect. Already a yes. So we just okay, got good. to our dates. That, that's all. <laughs> um, and in terms of timeline, so I've been in business for over 34 years. I've been in jewelry business for over 34 years. A couple of times, not a success. The last time was a huge success. Mm. And a woman stopped me today, asked me, am I the YouTube woman? I, I, I was the TikTok woman yesterday. I'm the YouTube woman today and the Instagram. Woman. So th- the, the point is, she said to me, she said, I never knew your business grew like that because there was just no outer evidence, which means that I work in stealth. Mm-hmm. I work with the people. You, you don't have to see no evidence. I had the I had my, my you know, I had my car, nice car, very, I mean, come on, really nice car, but mm-hmm. people didn't see stuff. I didn't post anything on socials. I, I, I lived in some great houses. I never posted them. Uh, So I did my work behind the scenes. I pushed the people. Mm -hmm. So I was stealth in what I was accomplishing so much so that people didn't even see it. They missed it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was her point. And I thought that was so amazing for her to say that. And that's when people would come up to my house eventually like, but you're so, I don't know why they, when they use the word humble, like you can't be successful. I don't know what that is, but. I, I, I have an idea. What they were really saying was that I didn't see it from you. Yeah. Get that. That's yeah. really what they're saying. Uh-huh. And because I pushed the people. Uh-huh. And so because I did such a good job at that, you, 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 you missed all really. Well, so that you can't really even get a timeline. You didn't, you didn't see it, mm-hmm. but you saw catalogs. You saw, um, I was in Vegas. Look, I spent a million dollars on that convention, but people didn't see money because I celebrated the people. Mm. And I never got up and said I spent a million dollars. I didn't tell that until recently. Mm -hmm. So I didn't talk my dollars. Mm -hmm. I talked what they could do, what they could make. I put them on the stage. I let them strut across in their shoes. So I, I moved the focus from me and stayed people focused. And when I kept my focus on building strong, empowered women that could buy a seat at any table they wanted. That's, you know, I I was living out Ephesians 6. If you help enough other people get what they want, you can't help but to be blessed. So people didn't see it and it's okay. Mm -hmm. It it, it was okay because Mm -hmm. I pushed the people. So when I'm doing, you know, it, it wasn't you know, the, the, the $200 is true. It came back around. That was one iteration, but then I had to restart again with 
same kind of thing, but this time investing. But but one of my detours, I purchased a franchise because I realized not going to business school, not having anybody in my family with the numbers that I believed in my heart that I could do. How was I going to get the numbers? How was I going to get there? I bought a franchise. Mm. And I bought a franchise with $2,500. That was a $295,000. We're going to talk about that on the next episode. Wow. We'll bring yes, we have to. Okay. Because that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I, I bought real estate, which helped me finance some other things. But the point of buying the franchises was so that I can learn systems, processes, and understand how things are done on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. It was my training. 10 years. I took off from jewelry to do franchising. Wow. And so when I went back to jewelry, my gosh, I was a beast. Yeah. You know, I was bulletproofed. I got all these emotions under control and I was about my business. So all that nonsense that got in my head before I had my helmet, I had on my bulletproof and I was unstoppable. Mm. And then I scaled. So I didn't see numbers like, OK, maybe a couple hundred thousand is true, then a million. And then I went one million to like four million. I, I, I did multiplication. Mm -hmm. so I, I was I was into multiplying in revenue and then exponential growth mm -hmm. and scaled and, and, and got smart from what I learned. And I didn't have one franchise. I was such a great franchisee. They gave me a second. Then they gave me a third. So I had all wow. that in, uh, three years. I had three franchises. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about learning systems. So everything I was just like downloading, downloading, downloading. So I downloaded all this information so that I could use it on the business that was coming back my way. But mm -hmm. this, this time I was going to be ready and I was ready. I had already been speaking with Les Brown. So I knew how to use my voice. I knew yeah the power of my story. So I, I, I had all, I had all the components, but mm -hmm. just didn't know how to use them. Mm -hmm. and I learned how to use them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I love that. Yeah. There's so many, I, that's, that's going to be where we close today, right there, because there are so many women that are listening that are sitting with the tool. Everyone's sitting with the gift, right? Mm -hmm. We're sitting with the gift. We many have resources. Gifts. Yes. Many gifts but not clear on how to utilize them and put them in an operating system that will allow them to flourish yes. in their lives. You know, we're all sitting in something that is underdeveloped that needs that training. Yeah. I love and respect that you went into the franchise space to get the training that you needed to return back and be stout. Like you said, come back a beast and be able to optimize to the fullest extent your experience in the, in the business that you said came back to you. Yes. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there was no abandonment. There was training. It was just like, I, yeah, <laughs> I'll it. be right back. Let me go get trained. Let me come back stronger, greater, more powerful and more yes. prepared to sustain this success. Yes. hundred percent. You got it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Dr. Tracy, <laughs> God did a thing planting you in mm -hmm. my inbox. And I, and I am just grateful. I'm grateful for this dose and I'm <laughs> grateful for, <laughs> I, listen, I, I can, I can spot, I can spot from up close to a million miles away, a person who is an anchor. I can spot and feel it. I can, I'm very clear when there are, there are women who are meant to be anchors who are meant to stand as a position in representation of what is possible for us millions and trillions of other women. And I see and recognize that, that you were literally planted in my inbox, literally, <laughs> literally planted so that we can reach so many great girlfriends who want to say yes, but are so afraid um, and confused on how to say yes and make it meaningful for their life. Yes, absolutely. 100%. You, you got have it. it. You have that fully. Okay, so be, before we close out, mm -hmm. for the great girlfriend who's sitting there going, okay, Dr. Tracy, this is easy for you to say because you've got the spouse who's supportive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, your son who's who has been, who you were able to support, who's gone off and he's doing his thing. And you, and you have been at this thing 
for so long, you had the training, you had the grandmother, you had the mother, you had a lot of things and you had Les Brown see it in you. I feel invisible. So it's easy for you to say you're very visibly Dr. Tracy Lynn, right? And things come to you. That's how some people are going to hear that. But I feel I'm at home in in Idaho and I feel (laughs) invisible in my environment. I feel like no one sees my gift. I feel like I don't have the support. I feel like I'm under-resourced. What would you say to her? Well, I'm going to start with the resources. Again, I started this business with $200. I didn't get a loan. There was no loan from anything. Even when I started the franchise with $2,500, the the first thing that I want people to know, that's why I tell the story about how many iterations that it took, because one thing is clear, and I say this all the time, sometimes as women, we buy into our story so much, we use it as an excuse not to achieve great things. If only I had what you have, or if you knew my story, well, I can match you. So look, we're going to take your story and we're going to use it to get you to that glory because you're going to be able to stand on that story. If that's the origin, then that's what it is. So the first thing I'm going to say is change that whole scenario in your own mind and start to realize that there is greatness. Now, I may not know what to do with it all, but I'm going to start there. And my story is going to pay me one day because you can write a best-selling book then about your story. But that is what we're going to stand on. Now, where can I go in Idaho? Oh, so I can join National Association of Women. It's national. National Association of Women Business Owners. Oh, I can join Toastmasters to start speaking. Oh, that's national. So what can I do with right where I am? That's how the conversation starts. Because now we're saying we're no longer, not this year. We're not using, not this year. This is not going to be another excuse. Mm -hmm. And we ain't talking to Sally again about what we can't do because she can't do it. You are not Sally. You are going to do it this year. Make some calls. Go online. See where you can go because now you've got to shift your environment and your perspective. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that you're going to do. And then when you start to get into agreement with all the things that are already waiting and what they're waiting for is you to say, you know what? I'm saying yes this year. I'm saying yes to 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 all the things that God has lined up for me because it's not going to cost me with what it may cost somebody else because I'm supposed to do it. And all yeah. I can do is get into agreement. Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's the short version because <laughs> yeah. That's oh, so good. Okay. All right, Dr. Tracy. You know, I'm not going to hold you all day because I know we got date night. I, I Listen, we got date night and you are you are dressed to impress him. He's going to be so happy when he sees you. Where can the great girlfriends keep up with you on social media and find out more about you and the work that you're doing? All right. Well, at Dr. Tracy Lynn uh, on all social platforms and it's T-R-A-C-I and then L-Y-N-N. I've got on a green suit, big hair and a blue check mark. That's how you know you found me. So find me there. And I just launched my uh, bigdogwolf.com community because I have um, an icon circle, which is my my mastermind for six-figure, seven-figure, eight-figure women. But then it was so many other women that needed my help that are not there yet, that have been in business or just starting. So I started my uh, bigdogwolf.com community for them so that I can help all the women, as you said, as an anchor. Well, I tell you, yeah. you are so intuitive. That's exactly mm. what I am doing and, and tapping into. So I've got to make sure that my reach is not just for this group. I have a lot in common with that group, but there's another group that needs my voice to get them there. So mm-hmm. that's why I started that. Mm. Oh, I can't, I can't wait to learn more. Big, big dog wolf. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Dr. Tracy, I'm grateful. I am so grateful for your time. I'm so grateful that you said yes. I cannot wait to have more conversation with you and change more lives with you. I'm I'm just excited, Me excited. Too. And great girlfriends, 
I, I already know the emails are going to, I, I can, I already anticipate the emails coming, but also send your questions. I want to know the questions you have for Dr. Tracy. I obviously have a trillion, but I want to know the things that matter to you that are going to help you reframe your life and things that are going to empower you to make those choices to honor your native gift. So do email us at welcome at thegreatgirlfriends.com so that we can get your questions incorporated into our next conversation with Dr. Tracy. All right. Yes. yes. I welcome their questions. Thank you for, 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 for saying that because I want the questions. I want us to come back and I want them to look forward to me coming back because I am going to answer their questions. Perfect. Oh, Dr. Tracy, I appreciate you. Happy date night to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Great girlfriends for listening today. Peace. Have a great day. All right. Great girlfriends. Did you enjoy this week's episode of the podcast? If so, would you please give us your amazing review on iTunes? Every single review helps another great girlfriend get plugged into the podcast and the community. Speaking of community, make sure you join our Facebook group at The Great Girlfriends. Follow us on Instagram at The Great Girlfriends and on Twitter at The underscore Great GFS. I'm Sybil Amuti and I'm out. Peace. Yay, Networks.